now. High School Holla. It's about to blow your mind. Holla, Chicago. Steven Spoon Ramsey welcoming everyone from Chicago and all surrounding areas to the best show in Chicago for high school sports, the H2S2 High School Holler Sports Show. We have started our Chicago Public League High School Football Preview Series. It's being brought to you by our friends at David Solomon. They design unique t-shirts and merchandise with fun, thought-provoking messages. You can purchase these unique items by clicking the David Solomon ad on the Urban Fieldhouse Media website. As the IHSA have a return to play policy guidelines, continue to open up high school sports across the state for conditioning, this is the time where teams start to prepare for a run at a conference, city, and state championship. Last week, we talked Whitney Young football. This week, we welcome to the show via Zoom from the city's north side, between the North Park and Albany Park neighborhoods, and also from the Chicago Public League Alana Heartland Conference, the head football coach of the Von Steuben Metropolitan High School, Dave Rivera is here with a few of the shining stars repping from Von Steuben Panther football. Welcome everyone to the H2S2 High School Hall of Sports Show. Thank you guys for joining us and being a part of our 2020 CPS High School Football Preview, Coach. Thanks for having us, Spoon. I appreciate it. We're excited to be here with you. Now, Coach Rivera, it's a ritual of the show that we always ask our first-time guests to share one of your most memorable high school sports moments, either as a player or a coach. And I see the players are ready to hear something that they haven't already heard. So, Coach, share with us one of your memorable moments. Oh, man, one of my memorable moments. Well, uh, I would say since uh, our program started in 2015, you know, we've had a lot of firsts. And uh, that's really, really some of my most my most uh, favorite uh, memories in coaching has been since the program was born in 2015. So I think back to uh, one of my goosebump memories was when uh, where I got goosebumps was our very first game ever. Uh, we were a sophomore team and we played at Shures. And, uh, and just seeing our whole staff and family and friends, I mean, that was probably the most attended sophomore game you've ever seen in your life. And, uh, and so I just had many goosebump moments, you know, our first tackle, our first sack, our first, everything we're doing for the first time. And, and like our, our staff is out there, teachers and, and everybody out there just seeing, taking it all in for the first time. You know, at that moment, we knew that we had made the right decision in, in starting a football program. And then I, I, another moment that, that I'll never forget is our, uh, you know, our first game against Amundsen, uh, uh, our first varsity game ever uh, back in the 2016 season, and and watching our, watching one of our players score the first the first touchdown ever, which is a young man by the name of Anthony Lomas, who uh, on a bubble screen on a, on a simple simple bubble screen, and the kid ran about I don't know it was probably about 60 70 yards uh, length of the football field and. Uh, watching the sideline go crazy when somebody's running, you know, running when, as he's running down the sideline and, and you hear everybody going nuts. I mean, just having that, that volume and that noise and that excitement in my ears uh, really, really is a, is a moment I'll never forget, you know, and again, that was another moment that just confirmed that, you know, we did the right thing starting a football program at Von Steuben. Now, Coach Rivera, let our followers know, how long have you been the head football coach there at Von Steuben? Uh, since uh, the 2018 season, so uh, so shortly before the 2018 season, uh, our our original head coach Alan Root, uh, uh, he 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 took uh, he took his dream job at at, uh, at at where he's from, Bishop McNamara, and everything. And so so he 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 that was an opportunity too good for him to pass it up. So um, you know so he got our blessing and everything was great. Uh, but then uh, the torch passed to me. Um, you know, I was one of the founding fathers on the on the program, and uh, and and when he took that other assignment, um, you know, our administration and principal at the time and athletic director, uh, they looked to me to 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 continue the tradition and continue the tour. So I accepted it, um, and so that was uh, so that so since twenty since the twenty eighteen summer of twenty eighteen. 
And Coach isn't alone. We've met Coach Rivera. Now let's meet the shining stars joining us representing Panther football at Von Steuben. Fellas, I want to give you an opportunity. Introduce yourselves to everyone. Let us know what position you play and what class you're representing for. My name is Jimmy Cole. I play tight end and defensive line, class of 2021. I play quarterback, class of 2021. I play receiver too. My name is Avon Pettis. I play O-line and D-line and I'm class of 2021. My name is Emiola Josine. I play outside linebacker, class of 2021. My name is Oscar and um, I play strong safety and I'm class of 2021. And we thank you guys for joining us. I want each of you to tell us and our listeners, what's it like attending Von Steuben High School and playing Panther football? It's very exciting to play Panther football because er since everybody's like, since the school is new to football, you get to have a lot of first, like Rivera said, you get to do, it's a lot of things that you can do that's different than other schools because there's not a lot of history. So you get to make as much history as you can before you leave. Um, I like it because you have coaches and you have like your brothers out there, you know, they're supporting you in school, which I'm not that good at school, but they're always supporting me, helping me out. And yeah, it's just like a brotherhood you like make throughout high school and close friends all throughout high school. Um, just like what my Oscar said, it's just like we making like a bond have my like first football team, we making our own history and stuff and building it and everything. And same thing with Oscar. Um, we just having a nice uh, a good relationship with people we play on the football field with and without on the field and without the on with on the field and off the field. Well, uh, I I love Bomb Steuben Panther football because it's like a new experience and it's like a new rush. Like I never, I never been on a team where like it was like so much brotherhood and the way they take care of each other. It's like it was so amazing. So I had to join the team and I had to learn that experience. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah, like what well, I mean, it was like I never played on a team where everyone was just like help you get better. And it's just like we're all like together as like a family, like we're one big family. And then. Coach Rivera and all the other coaches, like they'll just like help make sure like you do good in school and on the field, but they feel like school first and all that. Now, Coach Rivera, I've had the pleasure to see this team compete in our final game that we covered last year before the teacher strike. And for those who may not know, how would you describe the culture centered around the Von Steuben Panther football program that you and your coaches are building? Um, yeah, that was, it was a tough loss, uh, you know, but that's kind of what our culture is about, uh, is just dealing with adversity, uh, taking challenges head on, um, you know, and we, you know, we, we, we trust each other, we, we love each other, and, uh, you know, we do it all together. So there's no all the burden doesn't fall on just one person. We all share the burden. We all share uh, the work, uh, the workload. So, um, but, you know, as far as our culture goes, um, you know, we just sticking together um, and just, and just giving our best effort. Um, you know, so like I said, we, we ask the players to trust the coaches. Uh, we ask a lot of them, um, you know, in terms of commitment and, and, uh, and just doing everything that we ask them to do. And uh, and in turn, they trust us, and they do the best that they they do. The, they give us the best effort, and then we appreciate that. So, uh, it's not about wins and losses uh, with us. It's not about the chasing championships and plaques. We want to win. We play to win, and we do everything we can. But at the end of the day, uh, we we love the process uh, more. Uh, you know, we focus on the process. And we love the process, and that's what our culture is. It's just a process. Um, you know, focus on the little things that help you be successful later on. You know, and if our guys are getting that, then we're winning, regardless of what our record is. And as we take a, a moment to take a look back at the last season, which is, again, a shortened teacher season um, due to the strike, the Panthers finished with an overall record of 3-5, and five, finished fifth in the Public League, Illini Great Lakes Conference, with a record of 3-3. Three and three. Coach, how would you summarize overall last season for the Von Steuben Panthers 
and how it's going to help motivate the team going into this season? Um, so record wise, it wasn't it wasn't our best year. Uh, but uh, but there's reasons for that. It's no one's fault. It's not any one person's fault. Um, you know, we we struggled at times in certain areas. Uh, we had lack of experience. We had injuries. We had some players that we couldn't get on the field that that, that could have helped us. Um, you know, but but at the end of the day, uh, you know, we did have a some individually some some kids had real successful year. So, you know, when I look at last year, when I summarize last year, um, you know, we had three, we had three kids go on uh, to play in college, right? So they signed out to play in college. Those are, that's the first. So we got our first college recruit. So since we started the program, no, 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 no Von Steuben Panther has signed on to play in college. Uh, so last year we finally broke through uh, with that. Um, and so, uh, so that was a big, uh, big deal for us. So, you know, we had seniors that their work with, and the, the time that they put into Von Steuben football paid off uh, and uh, have an opportunity to play at the next level. So we want that to, you know, for this year's seniors, all these guys on the camera right now, these guys uh, have an opportunity to play if they so choose. Uh, and so, you know, those guys last year kind of opened the door, you know, the guy, those guys were the first guys through the wall. And so now these guys have an opportunity as well if they, if they really dedicate themselves and they want to do that, that hopefully that's a, that's a possibility for them. So it wasn't just about our record last year. We, uh, we had some guys that did some uh, uh, that, that were able to you know do some extraordinary things as well and get get to the next level. So we're hoping that that carries over as as also part of our tradition moving forward is that uh, schools will look to our program as well uh, to recruit uh, you know quality football players. Well, I want one of the players to tell us. We asked Coach thoughts about last season. How do any of you feel about the Panthers' 2019 season? Uh, I just think we just had a lot of adversity. There was, like, a lot of things behind the scenes that just wasn't, like, following our way. I didn't even really get to play last year because I, I tore my ACL, so I didn't play, like, the whole season. But, like, still watching, it was it was still a great season, let alone the record. Yeah, so, Spooner, the other thing about last year, too, is that, uh, you know, we played a tough schedule. I mean, we, you know, so so – from, so some of the losses that we had, I mean, they were they were, they were pretty respectable. They weren't like, uh, you know, we played a tough non-conference schedule. So we did, you know, so in week one, uh, you know, we played Lincoln Park, who, who's that's an outstanding program. Uh, and then we also, uh, in week two, uh, you know, we lost to Marmion uh, Academy out in Aurora. Uh, so they came up to Winnemac and, uh, you know, they were an outstanding program too. So that they're, you know, a 10-win team. Uh, and so, you know, so we played a tough – we played a tough schedule, um, and like I said, a couple of our key linemen, uh, you know, went down. Uh, we had one guy, uh, one kid, Zach Kurzak, who uh, got hurt uh, in the first game, and so that that kind of, you know, other guys were got injured during that game. And they kind of played hurt all season, so they were they were kind of physically were were not at their best, uh, and so that was something that uh, you know got us. If you don't, if you don't, if if your line is uh, is not is not great, uh, you know, going into going into a season. Uh, you know, you're going to struggle. So we had to rely. The positive thing is we relied on a lot of young guys, some guys that are back on our roster this year. Uh, and so most of those guys that got a chance to play last year are coming back. And so when I look at uh, how 2019 spills over into 2020, um, you know, a lot of those kids that played last year are going to be playing this year, uh, even though we did lose a lot of seniors. But some of the kids that we relied on uh, will be playing again. And I think that uh, there'll be some redemption. Some of our guys will be looking at redemption this year. Uh, trying to do a little bit better, trying to get a little bit more out of everybody and themselves uh, so we could uh, have a little bit more success. Now, Oscar, I want to ask you this question, man. Besides the way you guys have to prepare with the guidelines in place, what would be different for you as a player and this Panthers football team in 2020? We have the motivation to, like, um, what do you call it, like, avenge our seniors. If you want to use that word, you, you would feel me. Because, like, personally, I was – I felt um disappointed because I saw my seniors, they left pretty sad, upset on some games. But their heads were high and all that. But I feel like we owe it to them because they helped us, like, grow as a person. And they helped us, like – like, me, like, I never played football until I came into high school. They taught me, like, everything I know. And I just feel like I owe it to them. And Avant, I want to ask you, man, what goals have you set for yourself and for this football team to accomplish this year? 
Well, some quotes I said personally is to just improve myself from a, just to keep improving myself. Um, everyone put like 100% in, even though we're going through like a, this uh, period of time with the COVID and all that. That's why I want just like to put in 100% and then we'll just have like a decent season and decent practice. And yeah. Now, Coach Rivera, you've learned a lot, of course, from this team. And as we were speaking before this uh, show started about you, you have to look past the wins and losses. What would you consider has been the strongest aspect of this year's team with the players you have returning from last year and some of the new ones that are moving up to varsity? Uh, just energy and motivation. Uh, just a lot of want to, uh, a, a lot of uh, desire uh, to get out there. Uh, like I guess, you know, uh, you know, last year put a, you know, left the sour taste in our mouth for, for various reasons. And so, you know, like I said, redemption is a big deal for us this year. You know, a lot of guys, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Oscar mentioned about, uh, you know, redeeming uh, some of the guys that uh, some of the, some of the seniors from last year want to do better this year, uh, you know, and, and, you know, so kind of dedicating the season to them, uh, you know, some, that's what some guys are doing. Uh, but the main thing is that, you know, I, what I'm seeing is uh, just, again, lots, a lot of energy, a lot of motivation. Our, our overall registrations are up. So in terms of uh, work in the building and recruiting uh, new players from inside the building, you know, our, our, our registration is up. So we have more, more kids uh, wanting to play football this year than last year, uh, you know, and that's exciting, you know. So uh, that's going to allow us to boost up our, 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 our sophomore team. You know, we got, a lot, we got a large freshman group and sophomore, uh, sophomore participation. And so that's gonna, that kind of helps us rebuild our program a little bit uh, with some kids that we know are going to be around for the next, uh, you know, two, three, four years. So, uh, you know, so I think redemption is, the big, is a big word for us. Uh, we want to do better. Even our coaching staff, even we have to look at each other and we look at ourselves and we look in the mirror and say, you know, what could I have done better? What, what can I do more? And so I, I just, I sense that whole energy off of, off of everybody uh, from players to coaches in terms of, Wanted to get the season off on the right foot and doing everything that we possibly can. Um, you know, not that we hadn't worked hard before, but just kind of looking at how can we be better, what can we do better, um, and I think that uh, that type of self reflection going into this year is going to benefit us. Now, Coach, we have your seniors here, but of course, this doesn't make up the whole roster. Of right. course. Now, take us through the roster and what would the roster look like for you? Will you be older with these amount of seniors or will you be a little bit younger or be a, a equal balance? Uh, I think we'll be kind of, we got, you know, we have, we have a decent amount of seniors like these gentlemen here, but they're kind of spread out. Uh, they're kind of spread out between offense and defense and, and kind of, but I think we will count on, uh, we will count on some younger players. Uh, we, we graduated 15 seniors last year. So naturally, uh, so we don't have a lot of what you would call returning starters. Um, you know, so we're pretty much rebuilding uh, most of our offensive line. Uh, you know, we have our, our quarterback. We have, you know, Ahmad stepping up and, and maybe uh, some other quarterbacks that are competing for the position. Uh, but but who, whoever winds up being our quarterback will be a first-year starter. Um, and then uh, running back, same way. Uh, we had a, a running back that, again, he went off to college. Uh, Mohamed Imran, he went off to college. And, uh you know, so now the running back position is wide open. See who that feature back will be. I mean, we have a young guy, a junior that we like, uh, Jimmy Simmons Jr. I think he'll step up from there and play and fill that role. Um, and like uh, like I said, any of the quarterbacks that we mentioned too, that I think Ahmad is more than capable to step up. And and uh, we said we have a couple others that that are capable. I know Ahmad also plays wide receiver, so you know we want to utilize him as much as we possibly can. Uh, but then. Uh, you know, so we will be counting on some 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 non seniors and some younger players. Some of those kids coming up from the sophomore team. Um, so it'll be kind of a mix. We have some good freshmen that we like uh, early on and stuff, and some of them may even get a chance to play a little bit, uh, you know, up on varsity as well. So, um, uh, but you know, those are things that uh, it's too early to tell right now exactly how it's all going to fall. We're trying to see what, trying to gauge where everybody's at and what their skill sets are right here in this first week trying to see where they are. Uh, but we will be counting, regardless of what our mix of uh, players are, we will be counting on our seniors, particularly most of these guys up here, all of these guys uh, and others that are not on here on the show today. But we will count on our seniors to be an extension of our coaching staff and be mentors and uh, be good role models for our younger players 
uh, because they're going to, you know, we're going to need it. Um, and I feel like that's part of our coach and I feel like they'll do that. So we'll be okay just based on the type of uh, leaders that I know we have and, uh, and then, and then just relying on some of the younger talent that we have. But I know, uh, I know that, uh, you know, we'll be okay. And now this question is for that outside linebacker who was staring me down coach when he got on the zoom. I mean, he was, he was giving me the evil, like I was a quarterback for a minute. I'm just quarterback in the show, but this for this outside linebacker, what type of student athlete does it take to be a member of the Von Steuben Panther football team? So what type of athlete do I think is, has to have exceptional grades, has to be exceptional outside and inside, has to follow every rules, has to be disciplined, has to, you know, respect others. Like, that's why I feel uh, an outstanding um, football player slash student athlete should be. I, I like that a lot. I like that. Hey, Jimmy, I want to ask you as a player who you guys had to deal with a lot from the teacher strike uh, from last year and now preparing under these uh, strict guidelines of the pandemic. How have you guys stayed focused and helped lead your teammates? through uh, being football ready. So now that you've opened up and guys are, are starting to slowly get back into the groove of things, how have you kept your teammates focused? Um, some of us have um, been working out with each other during the quarantine and stuff. <laughs> working out. Well, we go, some of us meet up and we go back to our school and play football, just to get in a better shape. This became because you know quarantine and stuff, just sitting in the house all day and getting fat. <laughs> and we definitely know Coach don't want anybody sitting on getting fat. Now I want to know. Well, some we can tell. We can tell who's been sitting on the couch uh, in the first couple of days. We can tell who's been sitting on the couch and who's been actually getting out there and running, uh, running on the track. So we can tell. <laughs> now I want to know some fun facts, and this might come out in the fun facts. Who has the best nickname on the squad? Who on the squad has the best or the coolest nickname? Uh, I'll have to get to Jimmy Cole. We call him DK, Donkey Kong, on the field. So, yeah. He plays, he plays like a, a gorilla, you know, in the, in the field. So, yeah, that's why I always call him. So, yeah. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, is that true? They call you Donkey Kong, man, because you out there just smashing people? I guess so, man. I guess so. It's, I do what I, hey, I do smash people, though, too. It is what <laughs> I like that. I like that. Now, Coach said he could tell who's getting heavier. Who's the fastest panther on the squad? Yeah, put your hand uh, down, Jimmy. <laughs> it's me. It's me. I'm just a little bit overweight right now. But just wait when the weight get off. I'm going to get back faster. It's Oops, Jimmy says he's got it. he's the fastest panther. Well, if he's the fat, if he's the fastest, we'll be in trouble. If he's the fastest, we're in real trouble. So I'm hoping that somebody else could I could beat him in a foot race. I'm I'm faster. Um, I'm actually the fastest. I'm actually the fastest one. What? <laughs> well, I, I mean, coach, you you got you got all these seniors here. You got five seniors here, coach. Who? Out of these five, would you say is the fastest? Because I'm well, out of know. these five, I would these five on a full race. I probably would. Out of these five on a full race, I probably would give it to Oscar. But we have, but we have some, uh, but we have some fast guy. But we see, we could probably, we could settle that later today when we get to practice. We could settle that. You know, we just have to do a full race. But, but uh, some of our faster guys are not are not here today. Uh, but I would think probably our fastest guy on the team probably Jimmy, right? Jimmy Simmons, not this Jimmy, but another Jimmy, little Jimmy. <laughs> we have two Jimmys. <laughs> And they might actually both be in the backfield at a given time, you know. So we have Big Jimmy and Little Jimmy, but uh, but we have we do have a, we do have a little scat back. He's he's a speedster. Uh, he's a guy that we that will carry the ball predominantly for us, probably out of the backfield. So, uh, but yeah. So I wouldn't put any of these guys. Uh, I wouldn't bet any money on these guys on a track race or anything like that. But but, coach, but they'll run hard. They'll run hard. They got other qualities, Spoon. They got other qualities besides foot speed, you know. So some of our strength and they're tough and they tackle and block. So they do other good football things. Well, coach, you said we'll find out later today. If somebody can send me a video of that, 
I want to see which one of these seniors win the race. And, and Jimmy, I'm putting my money on you, Donkey Kong. I'm putting my money on you, man. Hey, you, you making the best thing. You putting, you putting the money on the right person. So once I come back, you're gonna see me go. I'm gonna be back. Shut up, you can run for me. Why? Okay. Oh, I love it, Coach. I love that competition between teammates. I want to find out, Ahmad, what young people term would you use to describe this Panther football team? You could say bussing. I guess you could say bussing. It is fun. It's because it's, it's, always, it's always some type of excitement going on, so I guess you could say bussing. Yeah. Jimmy, you'll go with that one? It's bussing? Yeah, it's bussing. They be lit, you know. We are working people, you know, trying to get to get the W at the end of the day, though. Now, when we first, all right, I like that one too. I like that one too. Now, when we first started our preview series, the first game I covered of the Panthers was known as the fight for Foster. Who wants to tell the people the importance? of this game called the fight for Foster. Who wants to tell the people that? Ahmad? It's like it's like a rivalry game. It's like it's like any college game. It's like a big ten game, but it's just for like our conference, I guess. For our like part of the city. It's like Michigan and Illinois going at it every every year. No matter what play no matter what players you have, it's still gonna be a dog fight at the end of the and that it is. It is definitely a dog fight. And it is one that if it ever comes, Coach and I were talking, when that comes back around, I'm telling people you better go and watch the fight for Foster. That's a game that, that's one of the best games in CPS football that I've seen thus far. And I, and I have to say that because the rivalry, how everybody in the, in the, 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 the stands were full. It was just full. Yeah, so we're gonna work. We're gonna work to see. Hopefully, we can bring that back next year. I know, uh, you know, with the conference realignment, it didn't make it possible this year. Uh, but uh, hopefully, Coach Olson over at Amundsen. Uh, hopefully, we can we can put that together for next year. Uh, maybe as a maybe a week one or week two or something like that. If it doesn't line up in our conference, but uh, but I agree, it's a, it's good for high school football. Uh, the schools being so close to each other and sharing the same field. Same home field, uh, you know. Like I said, you know, they, you know, we've won some, they've won some, and so it's been a good back and forth battle, uh, you know. And so, like I said, it's a fun, it's a fun rivalry high school football game. Uh, but it's all, but throughout all of it, it's been, uh, you know, it's been very, uh, like I said uh, previously with Coach Olson and the job that he's done. Uh, you know, it's always been uh, fun, right? It's never been personal. It's always been fun, and uh, the kids have fun with it, and. Um, you know, so it'd be good to bring back next year if we can. Now, I want each of the players to tell me, what's it like playing for Coach Dave Rivera? <laughs> it's fun. And it's, we learn, we, he teaches us stuff every, like, some stuff he teaches not even about football. It could be life lessons, too. And I know especially because me and Coach Rivera got that connection and stuff. Well, we in school and on the football field, so yeah. Yeah, just like what um, Jimmy said, it's like a, it's like a father son relationship. It's it's he teaches us a lot of like fundamental things about life itself, and like how we have to go through adversity in order for you to get something in life. Like it's just a, it's just, it's just a fun experience. Just to know that um, we have a coach that got, that gets our back and that understands where we're coming from. Just things that like not every coach will like to teach you. He really likes to focus on defense. It's cool sometimes, but sometimes <laughs> I'm trying to trying to run a couple routes, coach. But yeah, it's like it's like a father son connection, like at all times. He he always got our back and always looking out for us. You know, I like the, I like the way Ahmad threw in the, <laughs> the he couple rounds. He's trying to send me a hand, but we'll see. Well, you know, I've been a defensive minded coach my whole life, so but uh, you know, but I'm trying to appreciate our offensive players a little bit more. So yeah, this is a lot about technique, like a lot, like um, how like me being five seven and like a little lightweight, like he teaches me how not to get run over. Which I'm gonna be honest, I like don't get run over like that, but like. 
I'll be, I'll be hitting. I'll be hitting good. I'll be hitting good. So he teaches us how to hit and stuff, you know, being 5'7 and stuff. Cool coach. Like, it's fun to be around him. But, yeah, he also teaches, like, a lot of, a lot of like, lessons and, like, how just to stay on top of stuff and, like, just not fall back. And he's always, yeah, like, everyone says he has our, our backs and all that. And for those of you just joining us, we are talking Von Steuben football with head coach Dave Rivera and a few of the shining stars on the Panther football team. Coach, we always like to acknowledge the assistant coaches on your staff that join you in preparing the Panthers for football. Tell us about your coaching staff. Uh, you know, I'm blessed. Uh, you know, I, I'm blessed to have uh, some dedicated assistant coaches. Um, so just going down the list. Um, so I have my two off my two coordinators, right? So I have a defense coordinator, Steve Sa. He was one of the founding fathers in 2015. Uh, I met him uh, while we were on the same coaching staff on 2013. I was a linebackers coach at Lane Tech, or 2012. 2012, 2013. I'm getting old. My, you know, my memory is fading a little bit, coach. But, but I met him when we were, on, you know, we were on the same coaching staff at Lane. Uh, I believe 2013, and uh, and we hit it off. Uh, he's a, you know, we're very like-minded as football coaches. Our styles, our approach, the concepts. Uh, you know, so we're so we're very like-minded in many ways, and so uh, he had a chance to come over. Uh, he was one of the first guys I called when we started up the program, um, and so he's like I said, he's one of our founding fathers. So he's a, he's a, he's invested. Um, uh, uh, my other coordinator, my offensive coordinator, Nathan Quillen, um, tireless worker. He's uh, he's a guy that uh, again, uh, when we when word came out that we were starting a football program. Um, you know, he was one of the first ones to uh, show excitement and enthusiasm and just want to be a part of it. And so, uh, you know, he came on as an assistant and then eventually uh, Coach Rude had promoted him to the offensive coordinator. And so he's been our coordinator since. And, uh, you know, and so these guys that were on the original staff with myself, uh, you know, this is our baby. And so these guys, uh, they love this program as much as I do. Uh, and they do the extra work, you know, they, they, they take the work home with them. They do the work on the weekends and they're pretty much Boston with football 24 uh, seven, especially you know, during the season. So I uh, have an assistant coach uh, that's dedicated as well. Uh, Bill Altman, who joined our staff, um, who came on board last year as his first year. Um, and uh, again, he's fit right in. He's a hardworking coach. Uh, he's very versatile. He's experienced. So one of the things that that's a great asset for us is that uh, since he has experience, he has, you know, several years of experience, uh, you know, as a coach, you know, he can coach every position, offensive line, running backs, D line. And so we kind of utilize him to fill in, uh, you know, gaps uh, in, in our coaching staff uh, that we need. So he's been a tremendous asset for us. He's also our head sophomore coach. Uh, so he's, he's great with the kids. He's patient with them. And so he understands uh, public league football and, and, and the challenges and the needs that our kids have. Um, and then uh, we picked up a new coach this off season, a uh, uh, coach by the name of Carlos Jones, um, who has a co uh, again a wealth of coaching experience. He's coached uh, professionally, semi uh, pro. He's, he's he's got a lot of uh, coaching experience under his belt, um, and so he joins us uh, as a DB wide receiver coach. But he's also a coach that has experience. Uh, he's got he's been an offensive coordinator before. He's been a defensive coordinator before. Uh, and so he's also has experience. So he knows, uh, you know, he knows what good football looks like and he knows that the challenges of what, of, of, of what uh, our coaching staff needs. And so again, just having the versatility among our coaches that can coach multiple position groups is a tremendous asset. Me, myself, I'm a defensive minded coach. I've been a either a defensive coach, a linebacker coach or a, or a defensive coordinator, my, my, my coaching experience, uh, you know, but, uh, but I, I am, uh, coming out this year as a, as a tight ends coach. And so, so I got to be familiar with our blocking schemes and, and, and familiar with the passing game and, and actually knowing the offensive plays this year. So uh, that's going to be a trip for me. And so I'm looking forward to that, um, you know, and then, uh, and then we have some volunteers. We have a volunteer, Matthew Leg, uh, that's been, uh, Matthew Leg has been uh, our uh, strength and conditioning coach. And he's done an outstanding job, uh, you know, with our guys in the weight room and in the off season and things like that. So, so yeah, you can see I have, you know, I don't do it by myself. Uh, you know, those guys work really hard. They make me look good in a lot of ways, but, um, you know, but like I said, I love my staff and, and they love our program. And so, you know, I feel like that's one of the strengths 
that we have is is uh, our uh, um, relationships between our staff and our players. I think is unique. I think not a lot of not a lot of programs could say that. You know they have that type of relation. A lot can. There's some fabulous programs and coaches out there I really respect. But Von Steuben is one of those programs that I think, um, you know, has a good has a good mix and a good uh, good culture and uh, good relationships between staff and players. Now, coach, with things reopening under these strict guidelines, how difficult is it for you and your coaching staff to e evaluate your players? I know we're just getting started into this, but also <laughs> to be able to game plan for the season. Um, you know, so we just got, we got to stay on task. You know, we have a specific job that we have to do every day. And so that's what we have to do. So the, the, pan, you know, the, with the pandemic and the guidelines and everything like that, it's added some responsibility. So we have to perhaps start practice about a half hour earlier, just to, we have to plan a uh, practice, uh, to have the players there about a half hour earlier, just so they can clear the check-in. You know, we have documentation that's required of us to fill out. Uh, it's about 15 question uh, questionnaire that we have to uh, assess the players and their symptom, making sure that they're symptom free coming to practice. Uh, and so we record their temperatures and the documentation. And then uh, so there's that. Once they clear our station and they checked in, then they can join the then they can join the rest of the group. They can join the group for, for the conditioning. Uh, so that's an extra hurdle. But the players have come prepared. They brought me the, they, they bring the documentation, they brought their paperwork, uh, they brought their masks and they're, they're ready to go. You know, they're, they're willing to do whatever we ask them to do. Uh, so the energy and the compliance has been uh, phenomenal at this point. Um, as far as evaluating them, I mean, it's, it's pretty much, you know, we're only in day three. Uh, the first two days, I felt like we've had great workouts. Uh, obviously, they're not in shape. Uh, they've been indoors, most of them. And, you know, so we have to be conscious of that, too. We got to bring them along slowly um you know and uh, give them plenty of water breaks and 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 just kind of bring them along slowly uh we can't do too much too soon i think that'll be a mistake for us so, so um but we'll put them through agility and conditioning drills and uh and we'll see you know and we'll see, we'll see what we have other than that once we're in the drills it's the same you know they they, they can they, they can take their mask off when uh during the drill uh, and so that part of it has felt like normal when we've actually been in the conditioning drills and the stations uh uh, that part of it has felt like normal and giving them instructions on stance and techniques and mechanics. That felt, that's felt normal. Um, but as far as evaluating them goes, uh, you know, we'll try to put them through agilities and see who can run catch, who can, uh, who, you know, who's got speed, who's got, you know, you know, what our agility looks like and what our skills look like. And then probably going into next week and the week after that, we'll probably get a better sense of, you know, who's going to, you know, who's going to line up where and what positions. Now, coach, has this time away and under these circumstances giving you as a coach a newfound respect for the game of football? Oh, my Lord. Hey, coaching in general, just coaching in general. You know, we lost our spring baseball season too. Uh, and so just coaching. So it's not just football. It's, it's multiple sports, spring sports, uh, and now going into fall sports with all the uncertainty. But I think the biggest lesson for me, and I expressed this to my, expressed this to my players, uh, uh, at different times, which is, uh, it's still appreciate. We can't take anything for granted. And, uh, when sports was taken away from us, uh, you know, uh, you know, I have my family, I have wife and kids, and I definitely have enough people in my life to keep me busy, but not having sports and athletics, uh, really created a void for me. You know what I mean? And, uh, I need to have, I need, I need sports. I need to coach. I need to be involved, uh, with, with this, you know, with athletics and everything that we're trying to do. And, uh, and when it's taken away, you get a new sense of appreciation for um, the opportunity that you have to even be involved in young people's lives and, and to be able to coach. So I think for the biggest thing for me is just, uh, you know, I appreciate it more. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the position that I'm in. Um, I'm grateful for the job that I get to do every day. And, uh, and I appreciate my players and I appreciate everybody around me, my staff and all the people that I get to interact with and coach every day, uh, you know, that I interact with every day. Um, and so I appreciate it a lot more. And so, um, and then, you know, we also learn to appreciate uh, your family time more. And, uh, you know, everybody knows somebody that's either been either COVID positive or, or you just hear about uh, the, the, you know, the tremendous loss of life uh, that's happened already. And so I'm just thankful that my family is safe and, and my players are safe and, and all my friends and people that I interact with, uh, are safe. So I'm just trying to do for me, uh, that's just the biggest thing for me is just being appreciative and just every day, like a day, like today, uh, being thankful that I can, after this meeting, I can grab my keys and head out to the practice field and, and, and enjoy our uh, practice and work out with our guys. So I'm definitely appreciative.
And what about you guys as players? Having this time being under quarantine, has it given you a newfound respect for the next time you guys get set to walk on that field? Yeah, because like, like this pandemic just like realized how everything could just be taken away like in a snap. Like this was just like out of the ordinary. Like everything just ended for us. Yeah, basically, everything just ended. And like appreciative for like my family and friends and my team. That are um that are still healthy and being safe. Yeah, like to be, like uh COVID like made me realize like how quickly things can just go away. Like it feels like freshman year was just yesterday. And like now at this point we it's senior year. And some seniors like from last year, like that play other sports, it's like in the spring, they didn't even get to finish their sport. They don't get nothing. They just have to deal with that thing. Now, I want to, Coach, to share with our followers, what are the goals for 2020 in this Panther football program? <laughs> well, I mean, we have short-term goals and long-term goals. Short-term goals is to make it through this. Uh, we, you know, we have 20 days of summer contact days, right? So we've already achieved uh, – you know, the first two days. So we have 18 more, uh, we have 18 more contact days. And so the goal for me is to make sure that none of my players uh, get sick, nobody make sure that we're not spreading any infections or anything like that. So obviously the first goal for me is the safety of my players and my staff uh, and myself. Obviously I don't want to bring anything home for myself and my family and stuff. And so, so just appreciating, uh, you know, the risk that we're taking and understanding that uh, we have to do a, a, a great job. We can't cut corners and we got to do a great job. So the main thing is that, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that uh, in a short term goal is that we're doing everything the right way uh, and that uh, everybody's being safe and that, and I can send the players home the same way they came. Uh, and then, um, and then long term goals, uh, obviously within the season, um, you know, I'm hoping, uh, I just hope for progress, not perfection. You know, we're hoping for progress, not perfection. So, you know, we have like, we have a lot of uh, things that we can build on uh, and a lot of players with like these guys here that's joining this meeting. You know, if I can help them reach their goals uh, and put them in a position to succeed on the football field, you know, then that fills me up. You know, that, that rewards, that, that's my reward. And so that's my goal is to try and put uh, our players in the best position that they can to succeed and and, uh, you know, we do have a tougher schedule, so we got to step up everything that we do, um, our preparation and our practices and, and everything that we do. So my goal, again, is just to be ready to play each game each week uh, and just keep our players healthy and safe. I think if we can do that, regardless of what our record is at the end of the season, um, if I can get kids that uh, can put some good tape together and get recruited to college, that'll be great. If our seniors and players can stay out of trouble at school and graduate and, and uh, go to college and take advantage of academic opportunities and scholarships that they'll earn, um, you know, if they can move on to the next level as good men and, and women, we have females on our team now too. We have two females on our team. And so, you know, so football is co-ed at Von Steuben too. So I can't just always keep referring to guys and him and they, and, you know, so, but if we can just, if we can, if we can prepare our guys and be good people, uh, after the program and be good citizens within our school community, then, then I'm happy with that. And we're going to have to have those young ladies on as our shining star guests for our shining star segment. So we, we're going to keep that in mind too, coach. Yeah. And they're tough too. They're tough. I've seen, I've seen a lot from them already the first two days. So, uh, you know, so def they definitely will add to our football team for sure. Well, coach, I gave the players an opportunity to describe uh, Von Steuben Panther football. What and how would you describe it? Uh, and, and, and in a brief word, in a word or two, tough. It's tough. Um, you know, tough. I mean, we. It took a lot for our program to get started. We've been fighting adversity since we started. You know, uh, so it took a lot for our program to get started. Um. And uh, and then so when we did get started, uh, you know, we had some adversity. You know, so we, uh, you know, we just facing challenges and all the things that a new program faces. Uh, and we've been able to meet the challenges to get to a point where we've actually been promoted up now twice, and we're at, we're at a good conference with some good, good competition. And so we've come a long way since 2015. That's how I would describe our program is just tough. Coach, I just want to give you a brief uh, moment to comment. What's your thoughts about the Chicago Prep Bowl Classic game where the, where the public league takes on the Catholic League? I think it's a great tradition. I know that there's a lot of public league pride. Uh, I know there's a lot of Catholic league pride. There's a lot of pride in Chicago. There's a lot of pride, but you know, Chicago is a great football town, 
And, uh, you know, I think it's a great event. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to keep it going. The only thing I would like is that if maybe they play it at a night game or something like that so more people can go or so I could go. It's always at a time where I'm not available to go. So I'm like, you know, but I, I'll go out there. You know, I'm, I'm all about public. I'm born and raised Spoon. I'm born and raised in Chicago. I'm public leaguer my whole life. I went to the public league, uh, public school uh, my whole life, elementary school, high school. And, uh, you know, and so I love Chicago and Chicago football and Chicago athletics and Chicago public league. And so um, I think it's great. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, I think that that's something that, again, definitely should, uh, you know, definitely a tradition that should keep going. And uh, I think that uh, it's been enjoyable, especially since the games have been good and competitive. Um, but I also think that I would like it to be at night, do it prime time where I can actually go to the game. That'd be great. <laughs> and I'll join you in that, Coach. I'm going to put that in the suggestion box to somebody. <laughs> yeah, playing the game at 1 o'clock on a weekday just doesn't work. Uh, doesn't work for most of us. I don't know. Hey, before I let you guys go, I want to give you an opportunity, starting with Coach, and each of you can follow suit, to just give, as we say on the show, a big holler out to your family, friends, teammates, coaches who you haven't had an opportunity to connect with on a daily basis as you, as you would with, uh, without these conditions. So starting with you, Coach, who would you want to give a big holler out to and what words of encouragement would you want to give Von Steuben Panther fans? All right, well, I'll try to keep it brief. I got too many people to give a holler out to, but I got to go. But I think, uh, you know, I got to give a holler out to my wife, obviously, being a coach's wife, you know, and I coach baseball and football. So, you know, actually, I'm coaching year round. And so, but she's been very supportive and, uh, you know, she lets me do what I love to do. And so she backs me up on that. So that's one. Uh, secondly, um, you know, I want to give a shout out uh, to the people that made my student football happen. Uh, Alan Rude, our first head coach. Uh, Laura Lamone, who's now the network chief uh, up in our area, uh, she was the principal that pulled the trigger on, uh, she made the big decision that uh, that shook up the world, you know, when, uh, when, we, when, when we decided to start a football program. And so I definitely appreciate her uh, and, uh, and Alan. Uh, they're always in my thoughts and, and when I'm in these moments where I'm appreciating my student football. Uh, and then our current principal, uh, you know, Jennifer Sutton, uh, who, you know, um, she just had a Zoom meeting with our coaches yesterday, just supporting our, supporting us, having our backs, and just being really encouraging. So, I mean, she's great to work for. Our, our athletic director, uh, Martin, uh, you know, Martin, Martin Rodriguez, uh, who uh, I almost forgot his last name for a second. No, Martin Rodriguez, who's been, uh, he goes by Rod, so I normally don't call him that, but Rod has is, is been a, uh, you know, he's a great athletic director to work for. Uh, you know, he's on point. He does a great job. And, uh, you know, so I, I really appreciate getting to work with them. And so I think those those folks are, uh, you know, in my life, allow me to do what I do and uh, and allow us to, this football program to keep uh, to keep rolling the way that it is. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, I love, uh, you know, like in our players and the parents that support us and everything like that. I think that's all that's all part of a, of a successful formula, a successful mix. So I appreciate it. Big hot on to my mom for making all this happen for me. Because at first she wasn't uh, with the football team, but now she's making it happen for me. And the coaches for convincing her. And <laughs> who else, who else? Oh yeah, and all the people that made Von Subin football happen too. Because none of us would be here right now. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my mom and my dad. Like, just always pushing me to get better at whatever I'm doing. Uh, also want to give a shout out to all my seniors from last year that we going that we gonna miss and all my friends that went to school that we didn't get to make as many minutes this year because the year was cut short. To uh, Ahmad's dad, Coach Lay, um, who are my dad, my mom, my my family in Nigeria. So yeah, and the coaches too. So they helped me a lot through this year. They they helped me what to do and what not to do. So yeah, I've been going with that. So yeah. Shout out to like um, all the coaches to, for teaching me everything I know about football and my parents for letting me, supporting me, buying my cleats, you know, because football could get pretty expensive sometimes when you buy the extra stuff, but they were always there helping me. And um, shout out to Spoon for having us here. And yeah, my mom, my grandma, my dad, R.P., my pops, um, Coach Rivera and the coaching staff. And my brothers I'm here with today, and my brothers from 
my freshman year. I would like to give a shout out to my mom and my dad. They uh, pushed me into started playing football so I could try and lose some weight. I also want to give a shout out to Jimmy. He also pushed me into playing football and a big shout out to the coaches who helped me learn the sport because I only knew about street football. It's Jacob Gonzalez. Jacob joined in towards the end, but we wanted to acknowledge Jacob as well as part of this Panther football family. And Coach, I just want to thank you, Coach Dave Rivera. We enjoyed having you guys be a part of the H2S2 Chicago Public League football series. We wish you and the Von Steuben Panthers football team much success in 2020. We pray and hope that we get the opportunity to cover you guys again during the season. And just thank you, Coach, for being on the High School Alice Sports Show. I appreciate it, Spoon, and uh, I want to echo uh, Oscar. We appreciate you as well. We love what you do for high school football and athletics and sports, and just keep doing what you're doing, man. Uh, you know, it's a, you're doing a great service to the community and to all of the. It means a lot to to the schools that uh, that you're covering, and uh, you know, and it puts the focus on, on on where it should be, which is on the players and the work that's happening with the young kids in the city. So that's definitely a positive. Uh, you know, positive news and positive information that we need more of these days. So I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Man, our pleasure, Coach. Not High School Holla.